Welcome back to Oh My God, Why Am I Still Playing Competitive Play Stories. On our last episode, we told an epic tale of redemption, the power of the human mind, and gracefully ignored that I keep getting silver healing as Moira. With my support placements done and wrapped up, I was ready to move on with my life and not touch competitive play again until I can stop crying myself to sleep over the fact that Zenyatta is a throw pick. But as it turns out, it's really difficult to tell a good story when you just kinda steamroll all of your games in quick play. That's not to say that I win every single match, but it is to say that people have a tendency of giving up very swiftly when they lose the first team fight. So back to competitive play we go and hope for some more interesting gameplay. And while I was ready to submit myself to the nail jail in an attempt of not hindering my team any more than I am anyway, Sir Throws a lot over here insisted that I play tank so that he can get shorter Q times for his DPS placements. And let me tell you my friends, playing tank is kind of a miserable experience, particularly when you have more time spent in the login screen than in an actual match of playing said role. Needless to say that my experience playing tanks comes down to a bare minimum and as such it is indeed my personal worst role, which is hard to believe when you saw me play DPS. But our lord and savior Jeff Kaplan in his infinite wisdom has a solution for people like me, and that solution goes by the name of Orissa. Saying that you are good at playing Orissa is kind of like saying that you are good at breathing. It doesn't matter how incompetent of a player you are because especially in this meta you are sure to be able to play this character. Our story today takes place on Havana. Not wasting any time and making sure I was not gonna find myself having to play Sigma, I locked in the horse ASAP. But usually, the loss of competitive play demand that the second tank player on our team would then have the responsibility to pick the other one character that is currently considered meta, Guild Legendary took it to voice chat and asked me if he could play Orisa instead. Okay, that's kind of weird I guess. I know what you guys, but if I have somebody on my team who asks if he can play Orisa, I usually assume one of two things. They are either really bad at Sigma, like myself, or they are really bad at everything that is not Orisa. Either way, not giving him the character would be a throw in itself, so I surrendered my hero pick and went for Roadhog instead. The way that meta play usually works in lower ranks is that you can pretty much play whatever you like as long as the enemies also don't play the meta. That means that where Orisa Hog would usually be an outdated composition, we could definitely get away with it as long as the enemy did not play double barrier themselves. Unfortunately, that is exactly what they decided to do. Not a good start. Between Hello and Hanzo and Nate's on Metro, we would have a hard time breaking the two barriers, and it didn't help that Orisa's pull was a wee bit too far for me to try and hook into it. We quickly found ourselves in a situation where we had to rotate away from our high ground, and every last one of us could feel that we were playing an inferior composition. While the second hold into hook combo was successful on paper, I would be denied the pleasure of reeling in my prey thanks to one of Orisa's many no fun allowed abilities. From there on out, it really did just go down the drain. Our singular barrier could not hold up against the incoming damage, and we ate a massive Bionate. While I appreciated the damage mitigation from my breather, using that ability without also getting your HP back is kind of like taking a hit of bathwater more than anything else. I tried desperately to find a target and make myself useful, but all I could see was a Reddit Lucio on our backline, a barrier in my face, and absolutely no idea how I was supposed to get out of dodge. Naturally, our team's immediate reaction was wanting to switch to double barrier as well, but I had to let them know that I've never actually played Sigma for any extended period of time. Our only alternative at this point was Reinhardt. To say that I have no idea how this composition was supposed to work would be a gross understatement, but thankfully my main tank knew exactly what to do. He gave me very simple instructions of I hold, you strike, and so I did. I was left in awe when I saw that this single combo gave me 25% of my ultimate, and as you can imagine, I am now hailing this man as my personal deity. Clearly he must have spent enough time watching your Overwatch video so that his brain was big enough for the two of us. At this point though, all I was trying to achieve was trading barrier cooldowns to offer space and protection for my DPS to do their job. But little did I know that my DPS were nowhere near the front lines. It amazes me what having the attention span of a goldfish can do to your gameplay. Seeing as none of the enemies were taking any damage, I decided to take matters into my own hand and started using shift off of cooldown. A bold play to say the least, but I was certain that with all the space created, my DPS would eventually wake up to the opportunity and finally start doing damage. Assuming they were alive, that is. If nothing else, at least my aggressive play made the enemies needlessly waste a few ultimates. Not a victory in the traditional sense, but a chance to do better in our next team fight for sure. Now, as you know, I am not a tank expert, and while to this day I am still questioning what the point of a double barrier composition is when none of your DPS players are ever behind said barriers, I knew that tanks existed for two reasons. 
offering protection and creating space. And by god was I determined to create that space, even if it cost my life. Fearlessly pushing forward, I successfully managed to force the enemies into submission and when I heard Briggs call to rally, I figured it was the perfect time to group up on the card. I pushed forward, knowing that my team was right behind me and hit the enemy sigma with the old switch and smash. While my sacrifice did not result in a multitude of eliminations, my alpha chadness made the enemies play like a scared bunch of gold players. As such, we could safely regroup and stabilize without losing the objective. And know that I came back with a vengeance, not stopping to swing at the enemy Doomfist until he turned into a smear on the ground. Orissa might be able to stop my charge, but she would never be able to stop my seething rage, and it took only but a few swings of my hammer to send the enemies back to their spawn. The more time I spent playing tank, the more I felt my primal instinct of me smash coming to life. Some would say that I've obtained an unhealthy and unwarranted amount of confidence at this point, but none of that mattered to me. Because I had a hammer, the enemies had faces, and I was determined to acquaint the two parties. Seeing my brig push on towards enemy lines, I knew I had to stand side by side with my apprentice. Witnessing the enemy Orissa back off into a small room, I decided to punish her for such a cowardly act and use the acquired ultimate charge to bring down my hammer. While there, Lucio made sure I could not follow up with any additional eliminations, I had done enough damage for them to want to back out. I thank my Moira for doing her job and realized that the enemy Doomfist did not get the retreat memo. But previously, the team fights looked rather organized and coordinated, this next one was just shy of a mosh pit. The enemies engaged using a sound barrier and I suddenly, very quickly, felt myself surrounded. This is a situation in which me smash was not gonna get me anywhere except back to the spawn. Now again, I have to question the purpose of all of our barriers when our DPS are literally always on the flank. However, at least Nate redeemed himself with a massive dead eye. That hero play was enough for our team to stay and victory was within reach. Except actually not at all because they did the same thing again except they had ultimates and we lost the objective. Now here's my favorite part. As an amateur tank player, I dare suggest that the reason the enemies could just freely walk into us and the reason they have done so this entire game is because they have a substantial amount of frontline damage. And we don't. While they were playing 4D underwater chess, Nathan was playing checkers and Hello has been eating the chess pieces. Without saying a word, our Doomfist switched to Widowmaker, yes he picked Widowmaker into Double Barry without looking for off angles, and our lack of frontline damage would only get worse from here on out. While Nathan was busy chasing a frog, for some reason, our team tried to play the objective and couldn't muster to achieve much more than a few seconds shaved off of the clock. The only way we could still win this was by clearing up our communication problems, telling Hello to get the heck off of Widowmaker and regrouping for our final step. Stand. The enemy Doomfist was trying to throw a wrench into our plan, but I masterfully blocked his ultimate and he found himself taken out once more. With that nuisance out of the way, we rushed over to help out Orissa and a precisely timed use of the shift button gave us the advantage we needed in this teamfight. While their maid did get away thanks to a speed boost, this would not be the last elimination we obtained. Once we have stabilized our collective HP values, I was ready to finish this fight once and for all with another shatter. Softening the enemies by cleaving them with a fire strike, I rushed past their barrier and... Okay, let's take a look at just how many things are going wrong here at the same time. Alright, so that ultimate was a bust and I ended up being turned into a glorified pinball, but you know how I say, you miss 100% of the ultimates you don't use. We may not have been able to convince our DPS players to stop flanking, but when the spawn is literally right behind our shields, there aren't many other places you can be. And as such, our mid fight has been looking significantly better, and we chipped away at the enemies one by one. I eventually grew tired of getting pushed around, so I predicted their movement, hit them with the 2 for 1 charge, mashing Lucio onto the wall, and bouncing Doomfist into line of sight of my Bastion. Managing to stop the enemy team just shy of the final point was a huge boost to our morale and my already overinflated ego doubled down on making me feel like an absolute tank. God. Now, you may remember that I told my team at the start of our defense that I had no idea how to play Sigma, prompting us to play Orisa Reinhardt instead. But that was not a problem I couldn't fix. I used the intermission between the end of our defense and the beginning of our offense round and decided to look up a guide on how to play Sigma. Officially making for a professional great Sigma player after watching 15 seconds of a YouTube guide, I took it upon myself to carry my team to victory. In fact, I was so good at this character that I somehow managed to take out the enemy Orisa by using a non-damaging ability. But for some reason, Reason, I felt myself having to handle half of the enemy team and with no fault of my own have been taken out. God, my team is so bad. Naturally, the enemies focused the most important player, which is obviously me, and forgot that we still had Nathan as Bastion sitting on the card. Realizing just how competent I am, my mercy brought me back from the dead and I was ready to go at it once more. Obviously, theoretical knowledge is one thing, but getting a feeling for how a character plays is a different matter entirely. As the brawl went on, I have slowly transcended from mashing all the buttons on 
my keyboard to finally understanding, bit by bit, how Sigma actually functions. Who's your daddy now, huh? While I would love to tell you that the pain train knows no breaks, there's been a common theme going throughout this match whereby the enemies used ultimates and we don't causing us to lose those fights. You can tell that I still have not been fully accustomed to my character of choice because while I was trying to escort my healer back to the spawn and did manage to land a couple skill shots, I forgot to use my damage mitigation abilities and he had to pay the ultimate price for it. It was time to find out if our team was also able to press the Q button, so I decided to make the first move by using my ultimate. Honestly, it didn't matter who or how many players I caught in it because the whole point was to get their Lucio to use a sound barrier in response. And so he did. With one ultimate already wasted, you could tell that panic mode has been activated because they've been running around like headless chicken wasting more and more ultimates as the fight went on. Sigma achieved absolutely nothing, Ana wasted her nano boost on Lucio and they ended up driving themselves in the corner. We could easily take advantage of the chaos and eventually cleaned up every last one of them. But the enemy team was not done fighting yet. Before I got the chance to teabag my prey, I found myself stuck on the cart with a dragon making its way up my rectum and as such, I did what every sane prisoner would do and submitted to the idea that picking up the soap was an inevitable occurrence. But wait, what's this? My Mercy decided to resurrect me again? Is this what missing felt like all these episodes ago? Feeling a resurgence in my life forces, I used the second chance that has been given to me a second time over and brought my way around the objective until we eventually capped it. Ignoring that nobody has been pushing the card for the better part of the last 10 seconds, my team and I regrouped on top of it and we were ready for our final assault. Now as much as I would love to tell you the epic tale of a steadfast defense and how we won by the skin of our teeth in overtime, no such thing happened. They say that imitation is the highest form of flattery, but to say that their version of the last point bastion defense was a failure would be an understatement. We won in very unceremonious fashion and honestly, you know what that should teach us? Life isn't always about flash and pizzazz, but as long as you can stomp the opposition under your boots, you can make sure that your false confidence can walk away from any situation completely unharmed. I am officially a 100% win rate Sigma player and not a single soul on this planet can take this away from me as long as I never play him again. The end. Oh yeah, don't forget about all that stuff about drop kicking that like button, shattering the sub button and Lucio booping that bell. If you do all those things, there's a chance you'll see my next uploads. And who knows, maybe that's something you're into. Only one way to find out. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'm looking forward to seeing you all next time.